Welcome back to 12 integrals and this is the second video of 12 integrals and today we're going to be solving a rather simple integral again. It's just the integral of e to the power of ax times cosine of bx with respect to x. So this should look rather straightforward especially if you've done calculus at high school or at college before. So um, why don't you give it a go? Oh wait, I forgot to tell you, there is a little twist. You can't use integration by parts because then it would just be super easy, wouldn't it? So think of a different method, guys. Do you think you have an answer? Okay, so let's now take a look at how we could solve this integral. So I'm gonna be introducing a very interesting technique in order to solve this integral. And that's going to be using something called Euler's identity. I think most of us here are probably somewhat familiar with Euler's identity. It looks a bit like this. e to the power of i theta equals to cos theta plus i times sine theta, where i is the square root of minus one, or the imaginary number. And so we can use this in this very question. And so this is what we're gonna do. First, let's take a look at this exponential that I'm about to write down. It is e to the power of a plus b i x. Now you could rewrite this because there's an addition sign there and you could rewrite this into two exponentials. So then you'd have e to the power of a x times e to the power of i b x. So now we can look at this bit here. As you can see, this involves an imaginary power, which is exactly what we have for Euler's identity. So this is the same as above, except we let theta equal to b x. And so we can change this into b in terms of cosine and sine, and it would look like this. It would just be e to the power of a x still, but multiplied by cos of b x plus i sine of b x. And so now I will attempt to expand this to make the point even clearer. So this would become e to the a x times cosine of bx plus i times e to the ax times sine of bx. So what you can see here is there are two bits. This bit is a real number and this bit as it is an imaginary number. But here, this bit, the real bit here, is exactly what we have under the integral that we're after. And so somewhat um, integrating this instead is like integrating this plus this. But because the integral that we're interested in is only the real part of this expression, we could try to integrate this function and then whatever we have for the real part in the answer will be the integral of this, which is just the real bit of this expression. So let's see what I mean by that. So all we can do is we can try to integrate this function with respect to x. Now, I think we all know how to integrate e to the power of something with respect to x, right? Um, basically, you just take this and just pull it down. So what this equals to is just treating this as one big number, string this thing as one big number, you just get e to the power of a plus b i to x, all divided by a plus b i. And this bit here will be a complex number, which has a real part and an imaginary part. And whatever the real part of this number is, will be the integral of this bit. And whatever the imaginary part of this is, will be the integral of that bit. So now we just have to try to split this into real and imaginary parts. And this involves a bit of complex number knowledge. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to multiply top and bottom of the fraction by something called the conjugate, which is just basically a minus bi. I'm going to do that with the top as well, a minus bi. And what I'm going to do now as well is I'm also going to split this back into two exponentials, so that it's a bit easier to deal with. So what this becomes is it becomes the following. It becomes e to the power of a, which I'll take outside, multiplied by a minus bi, and because here we're gonna have e to the power of i b x again, which I'll use Euler's identity that we have earlier, I'm just gonna put that in and that's it. And then the bottom, we will have a 
plus bi times a minus bi, like that. Now all you have to do for the next bit is just multiply each of the terms out one by one and then just look which bit will be real and which bit will be imaginary. But I think you can do that so I'll just quickly go over this bit. What you will get is you'll get e to the power of a divided by a squared plus b squared which is just going to be that bottom bit multiplied each other you'll just get that. I'm just going to put a big bracket there you'll have a cos of bx plus a i sine of bx minus bi cos of bx minus um, plus actually because you have i multiplied by i there which will turn into a minus one um, plus b sine bx and finally since the integral that we're interested in I'm just going to remind you here is actually the integral of e to the power of ax times cosine of bx dx which is just the real part of the integral we evaluated when we have the answer we're only going to take the real part of the answer and the real part of the answer is the bit that does not have the imaginary unit or the i so this part will be a real part and so will this part because it doesn't have the imaginary unit and so we can work out the answer to this um, integral now, which would just equal to, let me just rewrite that, will just equal to e to the power of a divided by a squared plus b squared, because that bit's not actually imaginary, multiplied by a cos bx plus b sine bx. And there you have it. That is your answer.